uh, just got back from the launch event for the Sony A7R5 and was actually lucky enough to be able to get a copy for the next couple days. And we'll obviously do some comparisons and whatnot between the A7R5 and the A7 IV, which I think is something that people would be sort of deciding between the two. But while I haven't looked at the images yet, uh, what I can do is talk a little bit in this section at least about the usability and sort of the uh, functionality, I guess, of the new 7R5 versus the uh, 7 IV. Thankfully, they've pretty much kept almost everything that I love. All of the dials are the same. The button setup, everything is pretty much the same, which is fantastic. So for me, I have this outside dial set to ISO and then this dial set to shutter speed. And then the front is set to aperture if I have a lens that doesn't have an aperture ring on it, like this uh, 35 G Master, which is a beautiful little lens. But overall, it seems like they're very similar bodies. The R5 should be a little bit more robust. It has the same cooling system as the A7S 3 so it can handle more of this 8K video stuff and whatnot. But the two things that jump out to me right away, and there are a few others, but the two main things, especially compared to the A7 IV, is the viewfinder is a nine million dot uh, EVF while the a7 IV is a you know 3.69 million dot or something like that EVF it is probably the thing that I like the least about this camera. The a7R5 solves that by putting a fantastic EVF in here that is really sharp and really smooth and the overall experience of using the camera is much better because of that. And then on a similar viewing experience kind of thing, the a7 IV has this little flip screen, which is great. It's what the FX3 has. So you have the usability and stuff, and especially if you're filming yourself like I am right now. But as a pure photographer, I, I don't necessarily love it as much. I, do, I have to like just do a lot of rotating and flipping and stuff. And I do appreciate the ability to do kind of like a waist level thing, but it's just not the best. So the A7R5 does the best of both worlds. It gives you that same flip screen, be able to film yourself, all that kind of stuff. But it also gives you the functionality to simply do one of these little guys and gives you that waist level finder that is lined up with the lens. So you're not kind of offset and it just makes this whole section by just holding it and being able to just pop it up for a quick little thing. So, so, so much better. So again, I think the things that myself as a wedding photographer are going to care the most about are going to be the resolution. Using the 60 megapixels for maybe some of the ceremony and some portraits and uh, especially family groupings, things like that. And then the ability to use the lower megapixel modes for especially like the dancing and a bunch of stuff where you don't need 61 megapixels. The other thing that I'm gonna be really interested in is they talked a lot about the high ISO performance, but that is one of the things I like about the a7 IV. So I'm gonna definitely compare the two, do some test shots side by side and see how they perform next to each other because the high ISO performance is really, really important. As well as the dynamic range, it's said to be 15 plus stops. So we'll see how much that really works in practice. The a7 IV is the best camera I've used outside of the A1, I guess, for autofocus. And this has an entire processor just dedicated to AI-based autofocus computations. I have this camera for two more days, so I will definitely do lots more tests and uh, we'll definitely do kind of like a final wrap up beforehand. So let's go shoot.
All right, so I am back from New York. Um, have had some time to go over the hundreds of actually uh, images that I took. It was a super fun experience. So uh, again, thanks to Sony Alpha for having me out. Now, the caveat here being that I can't actually process the raw files because the camera isn't out yet. So all those were JPEGs with some processing applied to them. But um, I actually took those from the raw files. So I was still able to create JPEGs from the raw files that didn't have the baked in, in camera uh, manipulation stuff. All that to say, um, I'll definitely have to wait for the final verdict on all that kind of stuff. But clearly the camera has amazing image quality. Even in uh, the JPEGs that I edited, there was a pretty decent amount of dynamic range. So it's just gonna be one of those things where uh, I'm going to have to test quite a bit more once the camera is released or um, whenever I can get an actual copy. The IBIS was also pretty impressive. As you can see in this image in particular, I took this at 1 15th of a second. It's supposed to be eight stops of IBIS. And especially on a 61 megapixel camera, that's going to really kind of show up a lot more. And I think it handled it really, really well. I was definitely able to handhold that to a more than acceptable manner in that way. The other thing that I'm really, really interested to test more is the new autofocus. All of those new things are just fascinating. Uh, the AI has basically all of your joints. It can track and it kind of understands all that kind of stuff. So the, the biggest part of that is going to be if you track on a particular subject and they're walking behind a bunch of other people, you're going to see that track everywhere from their foot and their ankle and their leg to you know the back of their head and lots of other things that are really, really fascinating. So I think that is going to be a, another huge thing. And again, just the experience of using the camera with its much better viewfinder and much better EVF. I would say that the a7 IV probably has a stop-ish of better low light performance, but again, it's gonna be coming down to what the actual raw files look like. So stay tuned for that. But if you have any questions about this camera, leave them in the comments below. I did have a couple days to use it. I don't currently have it anymore, um, but definitely have a request into Sony to let me try it again, especially because, and this is definitely not confirmed, but it seems like it might be the same sensor as the Leica M11. So a combination of the Alpha 7R5 and the Leica M11, might be a pretty interesting thing for me. So anyway, that is another thing I would really love to test back to back. So if you're interested in any of that, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment below if you have any more questions and I will see you all on the next one.